Hello, dog lover, and welcome to Sorrow Dog Training. My name is Sorrow. I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. Hope you're doing well and everything is going well. Uh, I hope you can hear me and see me. And um, if everything is going well, uh, we're going to start the live tutorial for the weight command. In this video live training uh, tutorial, I'm going to teach you about weight command we're going to talk about the clarity about giving commands in general uh, especially when it comes to the weight command we're going to talk about the difference between weight and stay command we're going to talk about the meaning of weight command and how do you use it uh, the use of uh, the weight command and also how do you teach the weight command the weight command is one of the most important commands that I think uh, is uh, important to teach to a dog. And many, many times I get questions about some issues that dog owners have, including separation anxiety, uh, that we can use the weight command to deal with the situation of separation anxiety, which I'm going to explain in this tutorial. Uh, please make sure that um, the questions that you're asking today is regarding weight command, separation anxiety, and things like that. Uh, and at the end of the tutorial, if there is time left, I will answer any uh, random question that you have as well. So let's talk about weight command. This is something that um, many people have struggled with. Um, this gives me an opportunity also to teach you and take you to my classroom or training class that I usually do with my students. This is a sample of what you're going to get if you want to work with me as well. So I'm very excited to get this started. Now, let's talk about clarity when it comes to your communication. If you're communicating with your dog, you need to have a clear communication with your dog. If you don't have a clear communication, it causes your dog to have stress and anxiety. Therefore, you don't get the results that you want. What do I mean by clarity and clarity in communication? Many dog owners, they assume that their dog knows a command. They assume that the dog knows exactly what that means. In some cases, yes, they do. But in most cases, I, based on my experience of working with dogs and dog owners for over 16 years, I've noticed that most dogs actually don't know what certain words means. Dog owners, they assume that the dog knows exactly what that means. But unfortunately, dogs have a problem understanding humans. And that's because the human, the dog owner, hasn't taken the time to communicate clearly what exactly it means. Certain words, maybe certain sentences and certain situations, they are not clear to a dog. So, for example, uh, people will tell me, I ask my dog to get off off stop doing that off off uh, from for example jumping on the counter for example um, I keep saying off off and my dog doesn't doesn't listen and still goes and jumps on the counter and doesn't listen doesn't obey so that is for example a clear uh, signal that the dog, basically doesn't know what off means. Uh, it doesn't know what exactly it means. It knows that you're reacting when, you're, when your dog is puts on its paws on the counter and uh, is doing certain action, certain activity, and you react. Um, the dog says, my human is just reacting. It, it the word itself it doesn't really 
uh, connect with what the reaction should mean. You know what I mean? From human point of view, you are approaching it as you're saying off the counter or the couch or whatever it is or jumping on people or whatever. But your dog doesn't see that as a correction word or as a stop word or as a word that says don't do it or stop doing it. And that's because mainly is dog owners, they don't take the time to train their dog properly and enough. Uh, Dog owners, they do train their dogs. I would say most responsible dog owners, they will train their dogs, but they don't train their dogs enough. One great example would be that most dog owners, when they get their puppy, they are excited. They're saying, you know what? I'm going to do everything that I can to train this puppy, to make it the best puppy in the world, the best dog in the world. They're excited, right? And they sign up for a puppy training class, which is probably six classes, for example. And they attend the classes. And at the end of the class, they either learned one thing uh, or a couple of things or they didn't learn anything at all, and that's it. They stop. They don't move to the next levels of dog training. They just pause there. That excitement has gone down, and they're not, they're not motivated to do any more. Uh, they also, these dog owners, they may have learned something, but they haven't accomplished that task. Uh, So what I mean by that is, for example, they have learned that sit means put the bum down, but they haven't accomplished to teach the dog to sit every time that the owner, uh, the dog owner says sit. The dog only sits once in a while or sits whenever it's the, in the blue moon. Anytime that the dog sits, the, the dog owner probably doesn't even notice that, you you know, most dog owners, they say sit just for no reason. And if the dog sits, sits, if it doesn't sit, they don't do anything. There's no consequences. There's nothing happening. Uh, and nothing happens, it's exciting happens, nothing proper happens. So the, the training is not accomplished. So these are some of the mistakes that dog owners make that make, makes the communication of dog training in general not to be clear. Now, here's the bummer, May, especially if you're training your dog using treats. When you use treats to train your dog, the clarity, the communication clarity just goes down the drain, unfortunately. And most dog trainers and most dog owners, they, the first thing that they use as a tool to train their dog is treats. They use food or treats to train their dogs. And the, as soon as you do that, you are going against the law of uh understanding clear clear communication and training a dog properly. Because now when you're using treats, you are distracting yourself and your dog from learning the task. So the, the, the communication gets not only not clear, but it gets confusing as well. Because now you're trying to teach something to a dog and the dog is mainly focused on the food or the treat that you're providing, not the task, not the task of sit, not the task of stay or wait or anything like that. So the dog gets even more confused when you use treats. So when you use food or treats, you are not having a clear communication with your dog because your dog is focused on food. And as you know, food has a space and time and a place to eat 
and enjoy. It doesn't mean that you can use treats or food uh, anytime during the day, especially when it comes to training. Especially when you are training your dog, when you use treats, that should be uh, done in a way that is perfect. If you're going to use treats, your timing, your technique, your ability to use the treat to train a dog has to be perfect, has to be, um, has to be in a way, um, hold on, what's going on here? We're having, are we having technical problems? Okay, we're back. Uh, the, the timing of training a dog using treats has to be perfect. And most dog owners are not uh, a, a, an ideal dog trainers to use treats to train their dogs. I don't know what's going on with the stream today. Uh, I'm freezing and it's kind of doing something funny. Uh, so first of all, you have to be clear in your communication. When you're telling your dog, sit, stay, come, heal, wait, stand, down. These commands have to be clear to your dog. They need to know exactly what that means. Okay. And most dog owners, they don't do enough. You, you, for example, if you need to teach a dog a command of sit or stay, you have to do this for months in order for the dog to learn. And you have to be committed to do it in um, and consistent uh, on training your dog in a way that your dog literally learns what that means. So you can ask your dog to sit with your eyes closed and hands and, and with your body language like this. You can say, Robert, sit, and Robert will sit to that point. You have to be that good in order for the for you to say that my communication is so clear with my dog that my dog can obey me and listen to me and do what exactly I'm asking it to do with my eyes closed, my hands tight, right? Has to be that clear. So that part of the communication or train part of the training has to be very clear before you start training your dog. So the first step is clarity. Make sure that you are clear in your training. Now, next, let's talk about the difference between wait and stay command. This is a major confusion and also major uh, distraction in training, especially that we just talked about clarity there has to be a clarity with the, and a difference between stay and wait. In our human lives, we do differentiate the words of stay and wait. But when it comes to our dog training or our dogs, we are not capable of differentiating them properly. And that is itself causes more confusion in the dog. So let's figure out what's the difference between stay and wait. So stay is the first step of training a dog to wait for you, to stay for you, to be patient, right? Be, be uh, in that wait, in that uh, waiting mode, okay? In the staying mode. That's the first step. Stay is a command that we teach the dog when we're using a position, for example, we are asking our dog to sit and also stay. We're asking our dog to lie down and stay maybe. We're asking our dog to stand and stay. So that's one thing that you want to also remember. Next, the stay is a short period of time. What that means is you're asking your dog to stay for maybe 10 seconds up to maybe 10 minutes, right? Stay doesn't 
doesn't go and shouldn't go longer than 10 minutes. So what do I mean by that? When you're training your dog, you ask your dog to stay, sit and stay for 10 seconds, for example. And as soon as uh, 10 seconds is over, you release the dog, right? You say, okay, the stay command is over, release. And you can start making it 20 seconds, maybe up to a minute, and then make it two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes. So basically, you're asking your dog to sit, for example, and stay for five minutes. Or you're asking your dog to lie down and stay for seven minutes. Maybe you're asking your dog to stand and stay for nine minutes. Maybe... You even ask your dog to sit and stay for 10 minutes and you're just staying there for 10 minutes and teaching your dog to just sit and stay for 10 minutes. The other thing about stay is that you are in front of your dog. You're, in, you're visible to your dog. Your dog can really see you, can actually see you physically, can see you. You are right in front of the dog. And the dog says, I can see my human and we are waiting and staying at the same time, doing the same thing, stay. So that's the stay. And many people, for example, when they're doing some exercises with dogs, let's say they're crossing the road and they're coming to uh, the curb and they ask the dog, sit, wait. So they're using weight when they're crossing the road. So they're using the wrong command at the wrong time. You're not supposed to ask your dog to wait in that situation because you're in front of your dog. The, your dog can see you. So therefore, you should use the stay command. If you are right in front of your dog, you're visible to your dog, you're, you can just say stay to your dog. Let's say you want to feed your dog and you're putting your food, dog's food ball in front of your dog. That shouldn't be weight command. Should be stay because you're in front of your dog and you're feeding your dog and you're offering the food to your dog. That should be stay command. Are we clear on stay command now? Now let's talk about uh, weight, weight command. Weight command is more than, longer than uh, four minutes, uh, 10 minutes. And uh, it goes up to four hours. So you can start teaching the dog to wait for you after 10, you know, if your dog knows to stay for 10 minutes, you can elongate it to become a wait command, uh, which the dog can wait for you for four hours. So it's different between stay and wait, right? Uh, the other difference between wait and stay is that you are not visible to your dog. You are not in front of your dog. Your dog cannot see you, shouldn't see you. So the weight is something that you're asking your dog to uh, tolerate in your absence. And there is a way to teach it to a dog, which I'm going to show it to you in, in a bit. But I just want you to understand the difference between weight and stay. So when you're crossing the road, for example, now you know weight it doesn't, it, you shouldn't be using weight command. You should be using stay command. Weight is not the right command at that moment, right? So it's something that you have to uh, differentiate and make it clear to you and your dog. You have to understand, first of all, what's the difference between stay and weight, and then teach it to your dog as well. So that's the difference between stay and wait. Now, let's talk about the meaning of wait and use of it. I like to use the wait command, as I said, when I'm not visible to my dog. When it's 
when my dog when I'm, my dog is not supposed to see me i like to use the wait command for uh, situations that i will have to leave my dog alone on its own for let's say an hour or two or maximum four hours as i said the wait command can go up to four hours you don't want to go longer than four hours because what happens when you go longer than four hours it causes kind of a stress in dogs dogs they do they can be uh, trained to tolerate your absence uh, be alone maybe up to four hours but after that it becomes a little bit challenging unless you know every dog is different but most dogs can tolerate up to four hours and most dogs some dogs also can tolerate you know a few hours added to that four hours you know five hours six hours seven hours depending on each individual individual dog they can uh, they can tolerate that abs your absence they they will be able to um, figure things out now if you have a dog who has separation anxiety you know there is an anxiety already developing your dog and you want to use the wait command for it to wait while you're absent that's a little bit challenging for that dog to learn because there is an anxiety already develop, developed in the dog already. We cannot really start using the wait command right away and expect the dog to um, figure it out and start tolerating and wait for you. That's something that you have to work on long term in order to for that dog to figure out what exactly this means and what happens when we do this. So you can just go straight forward and teach the dog the wait command and expect the dog to deal with separation anxiety. Now, puppies as well, you can't just leave them home alone and, they, and tell them to wait and maybe even teach them the wait command and expect them to tolerate. Puppies, overall, they are very dependent on you, on humans, on other individuals to take care of them. So you can't leave a puppy home alone when they are young because it will cause a lot of... Um, mental emotional damage in the dog when they are left home alone uh, at that young sensitive age they need uh, a lot of support from you from humans in order to learn first of all uh, how to tolerate just living with humans and then learn how to tolerate uh, being separated from humans that's a different story you know you can't just teach a puppy to wait for you i hear a lot of people they say i got a puppy but i have to go to work and i have to leave my puppy home alone for uh, seven eight nine hours a day uh, how do i teach my dog to stay at home for seven eight nine hours a day that is impossible first of all and second of all it's just too much for a puppy Third of all, uh, I don't recommend leaving a puppy home alone for that many hours, right? Uh, if, if you are in that situation that, first of all, you have to go back to work and you have a puppy uh, or you haven't got a puppy yet, better not get the puppy yet because your lifestyle is just not ideal to have a puppy that you have to put your puppy in a situation that it has to stay home alone. Psycho psychologically and emotionally, mentally, it's just not healthy for a puppy to stay home alone that many hours. Uh, you have to come up with other solutions. You, you know, you have to either hire uh, caretakers, ca caretakers to take care of your puppy, or you have to uh, send your puppy to the doggy daycare in order for the puppy to 
you know, have supervision and also co company throughout the day. Uh, especially, you know, when puppies are in that young, uh, young uh, stage of learning, observing and uh, understanding what life is, especially with humans, you want to be there. You want to be with your puppy, teach it and train it and spend time, quality time with your puppy. So situations like that, that's, that's not when you use the weight command. You know, that should be something that you, you have to prevent it from happening. You know, having a, you can't just, for example, have a, uh, the idea of um, I'm going to get a puppy and go to work and I'm going to ask my dog to wait for me. That's not a good solution. Um, you can't have a puppy, you know, in a way you can have a cake and eat it too. You can not have a puppy and work nine hours a day, nine, ten hours a day and expect to have a decent puppy, decent dog. Uh, you can't just go and adopt a dog who has especially a lot of anxiety, including separation anxiety, and then expect it to tolerate being home alone. All these things have to be prevented before you even get those dogs. Now, if you have a dog now and you want to teach it how to wait for you, that's a different story. Now, how do we teach a dog to wait for you. The way you teach a dog to wait for you is you start from very basic. You start from the beginning. Uh, what that means is you start from teaching your dog the, the fundamentals, the foundation, the basics, and then intermediate levels and advanced levels in order for the dog to learn. Uh, what that means is you can't just teach a dog just this command and hope that your dog is going to learn it. Or you can't just straightforward teach the dog the weight command and hope that the dog is going to learn the weight command on its own. There is, there is a, uh, there are steps that you need to take in order to teach a dog something. So I'm going to quickly and briefly explain what those steps are. The step starts from fundamental, teaching yourself and your dog the foundation, building the foundation, then teaching the dog the puppy training level uh, lessons that the puppy can learn and the puppy can understand what those aspects of uh, commands and learning is. Once the puppy level has uh, ex exceeded, then you go to the next level, which is basic level. You teach the basic level in, uh, in form that teaches the dog, the dog learns, and then you teach the basic level in different environments and different situations. So the dog learns all that in the basic level. And then you go to the next level, which is intermediate level. You teach the dog the same lessons in different environments, different distractions, different uh, um, time levels and durations and all that. And then you go to the expert uh, advanced level. So you see there are levels that you need to take to in order to train your dog, right? You can't just go and teach the dog one thing and hope that the dog learns. Or you can just do whatever you, however you want to do it and expect the dog to learn. That doesn't happen. That's one of the problems of dog training. Dog training uh, industry has uh, suffered and has made a lot of um, confusion in dog owners because we don't do it properly. Now, speaking of doing uh, properly, if you want to uh, learn how to properly train your dog, I have the perfect solution. And this uh, live video 
is brought to you by Perfect Dog Pl uh, Plan. It's a new program that I have created, um, which coaches you as a busy dog owner to gain control over your adult dog by providing weekly group training sessions and lifetime support plus customized program and plan which uses no treats, no aversive tools, and no aversive methods to get you to the results that you want. In order for you to be able to join this program, you have to uh, set up a free Zoom call with me to see if you qualify for this program. I take in some students who are based on invitation. I only invite students to this program. And if you want to be one of those who gets invitation, we have to see if you are the right uh, candidate for this program. So all you have to do is set up a free Zoom call with me to go through an interview session to figure out if we are a, we are a good match for each other. The link to this uh, setup for the Zoom free, free Zoom call is in the description of this video, which you can click on it and set up the day and the time that is ideal for you to meet me and we talk about it. We figure out if you are the right person to join this program. There are few students that I'm working at the moment, but the benefits of this program is that you get a private dog trainer that can you can hire me for a for, for life as a private dog trainer to work with you. You can use uh, this program on your own dog or multiple dogs that you will have you have now or you will have in the future you're going to play fun games rather than using treats or food to train your dog you're going to do all the lessons and the training happens in your home so you don't have to travel to a school or class or a facility to in order to train your dog is the worst case scenario if you do it outside of your home to train your dog if you are going to go or take your dog to a classroom or take your dog to a private training that is additional uh, stress that you're adding to your dog which reduces the learning process <clears throat> you can have outdoor control over your dog after working with me and you're going to have a great healthy dog so all you have to do is set up a free, free zoom call with me it's a lifelong process training that we're going to go through together. It's not just a few weeks of training classes. It's a lifelong process that will work together. You're going to learn using playing games and praise. You're going to understand your dog even better. There are monthly workshop, weekly coaching calls that you can talk to me directly to ask your questions, to ask your issues that you're having with your dog you're going to have a facebook group that is private you can join with and talk to with other dog lovers just like you we're going to train your dog without the use of treats or food it's a lifetime access to the program it never expires and you get to work with me full-time and lifetime service as i said which is a very important to understand this concept that you're not just hiring me for a few weeks or a few months, you're hiring me for life. So again, if you want to join this program, all you have to do is set up a free Zoom call with me. You can find the link in the description and I hope to see you and talk to you soon. Now, Let's continue with our um, tutorial today. So we, how do we teach our dog the weight command? So I'm going to show you um, a video, a couple of videos that you're going to sit watch together. It's going to sh show you the process of how do we teach the weight command. So here's uh, how we teach 
to, we start to teach the weight command. So Esther, this way. So I'm going to ask Esther to sit and stay. So Esther, sit, stay. So that's how you ask your dog to sit and stay. And then you walk away. So your dog is supposed to stay there while you're visible to your dog. And you can do anything during the stay in general. You can move around. Uh, but your dog is not supposed to move. So if the dog moves, you, may, you want to make sure that they go back to that position that they were originally asked, which was sit and stay. And if they move, say yes or no. So that would be your first challenge to accomplish sit and stay before moving on to wait. So you see now she's having a hard time on figuring it out very good. Now she figured it out. Good girl. To even tolerate me moving around her when I'm invisible to her. So Esther, this way. So I'm going to try it one more time. Esther, sit, stay. So you want to make sure that your dog can tolerate you moving around and not just staying by your dog's side. You see, she moves. So she moves because she has a hard time letting me go off her, of her view. So that's why you have to practice a lot of sit and stays before you get into a weight. You have to be able to teach your dog to tolerate this little millisecond that I go out of her view. So you see, she doesn't get it. You have to teach this one. So in order for it to work, my command of stay has to be nice and clear. So what I mean by that is, so watch this. If I say, Esther, sit, stay, stay. So because it wasn't clear, you see, it, she moves. But if I make it clear, now this time I'm going to make it really clear to her. So Esther, sit, Esther, stay. You see the difference? If I make it clear, it makes it clear for them to understand exactly what you want. Good girl, good stay. But if you don't really mean it, and if you don't give it clearly, your dog gets confused, doesn't know what it's supposed to do. You don't have to be angry, you don't have to be frustrated or anything. Just Esther, sit. Esther, sit. Nice and clear. You know, there's nice clear voice coming out of my mouth, right? I'm not yelling, but I'm very clear. I, the neighbor can understand what I'm saying as well. It has to be that clear. Good girl, good girl, yes, okay. I'm gonna ask her to sit and stay, but we're gonna go longer than a minute or so. So Esther, sit, Esther, stay. So we're gonna stay here for a minute or even longer, as long as it's uh, possible, in order for us to teach her to stay or wait longer than this. So I'm going to wait here for a minute, OK? I'm going to edit this, but we're going to stay here for a minute or two. So it's been two minutes now, and we've been waiting and staying here. We're getting to two and a half minutes. She's doing really good. Now I'm going to drop the leash as well. I'm going to move around. This is a different uh, situation, different scenario. So we're going now about three minutes or so. So it has been four minutes or so now, and she's still sitting. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, yes. So she waited about five minutes or so. So now we're going to teach her to wait. As I said, the wait you're not going to be visible to your dog. So what you're going to do, you're going to ask your dog to sit and stay, and you're going to go somewhere behind the wall or somewhere. Esther, sit. Esther, stay. You're going to go somewhere that your dog cannot see you. So remember now that we have good understanding of what stay is, I'm going to walk away from her because I have a feeling that she knows what stay is. So I'm going to challenge her, and I'm going to go behind a wall. So here, hopefully, she can't see me. 
So I'm behind this wall. I'm going to wait 10 seconds and then go back. and praise our dog yes yes and then i'm gonna try it again esther sit esther stay this time i'm going for 30 seconds she broke the command you don't need to punish your dog you just practice more esther sit esther stay one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's thirty seconds. <laughs> Esther, sit. Esther, stay. It's not perfect yet, but that's how you start building it up that's how you start teaching your dog to wait you just make it longer go behind the wall behind the door go to the next door and come back if you see your dog is being able to tolerate 10 seconds add 10 more seconds if your dog is tolerating 20 seconds add another 10 seconds and build it up to the point that your dog can stay for a minute two minutes five minutes half an hour an hour and on and on and then ask your dog to wait for you home alone maybe for an hour i don't recommend leaving dogs home alone in general but if you have to that's how you teach your dog to wait for you instead of getting stressed but don't leave them home alone all of a sudden you have to teach them obedience you have to train them to get ready for the situation that is coming which is being left home alone so train them before you leave them home alone and this may take a few weeks may take months may take a year you just have to take these steps train your dog and then get the result hopefully that makes sense i will be doing more videos like this in so future. i hope that makes sense uh in the beginning uh, so that's the first step of teaching your dog the weight command okay you start with the stay and you start expanding on that right uh, you start uh, making it longer and longer and again the other thing that i want you to i want to emphasize on and to, for you to understand is you can't just teach the dog the weight command all of a sudden there is a process that you have to go through in order for the dog to learn so the process is you have to start teaching the dog the sit and then the command of stay, and then the command of come, and then heal, and then stand, and then down, and then wait. So wait is one of the last commands that, that we teach the dog. And the reason we do that is because there's a reason we do that. There is a reason why we stop go, start with this command and then that command and that command. That because that's how dogs learn. That's how they can learn. If you do it here and there, this and that, that's why you don't get great results. That's why when you say, I have taught my dog to sit and stay and come, for example, but when I go to the park, and I ask my dog to come, it looks like it's ignoring me. It's a deaf. It doesn't listen to me. It doesn't hear me. That's because 
you do this and that and that, and you do it this way and that way. You do with treats, without treats. You do this, you do that. You watch this video, you watch that video. You do this and that and that, and then you get you get confused and you uh, you uh, transfer that confusion in your dog, and then you expect your dog to be perfect. Where in the first place you're not perfect yourself, right? Your uh, training yourself, you're, you as a trainer of your dog, you're not perfect yourself and you expect your dog to be perfect. So this is why I suggest you to, to do things properly, right? To do things in a way that makes more sense for you and your dog. So you're not confusing the dog. You are not stressing your dog and you're not making your dog confused either. So this is why I suggest you to work with me if you are candidate, if you're the right person, there to do the perfect way of training so you can have the perfect dog. And I have the perfect dog plan, the training and the coaching plan, and if you want to learn more about it and also work with me regarding creating that perfect dog, then contact me and set up a free Zoom call so we can work together. So this is why I suggest you to do the training properly in order for you to get better results. If you do whatever, you won't get results. If you do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you won't get great results. So now let's go to the next step. We have taught our dog the stay command and we believe that our dog knows the stay command. What do we do next? So let's learn what we are going to do next. The way you're gonna start continuing teaching and improving the weight command is after you have practiced a lot of long stays, now we're gonna start asking our dog to wait. Just sit, stay. So that's how we ask our dog to sit and stay. But the weight now we're gonna say, Josh, wait. We're gonna use two of our hands and we're just gonna kind of show to our dogs that we are asking them to wait. Now, the thing is, you can use any hand signal you want to use, but these hand signals are going to be hand signals that are used internationally. Uh, they use it everywhere. So it's better to use the same hand signal all the time. So now, Josh knows what stay is. So I'm going to ask him to wait now. So the wait is going to be like this. Uh, Josh, wait. Okay, so with two hands, I'm just going to, right in front of him, I'm going to tell him to wait. Then I'm going to leave the environment, okay? So I told him, Josh, wait. And I'm going to go behind the door. And I'm going to wait 10 seconds. So the way you're going to count it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 seconds, go back. And hopefully your dog is going to be waiting there. Good boy. Praise your dog for waiting for 10 seconds and then restart it again, go for 20 seconds. So here we go again. So let me try it one more time. So Josh, sit. Josh, wait. I'm going to go behind the door again. Just realize that we are just breaking it down to smaller pieces at the moment and then we're going to break it down to longer times. So that's been 20 seconds. Now, if you have noticed, good boy, Josh, good boy. Now, if you have noticed on the wait command, even though I told Josh to sit and stay and wait then, uh, we don't mind them moving around. On the wait command, they can, they're allowed to move around. They're, they don't need to just stick in one spot. So one more time, I'll do it with Josh. So I'm going to say, Josh, sit. I'm going to say, Josh, wait. So it's different than stay, right? So now they're getting used to the word wait, but they see that we're doing the same thing that we used to do with the stay, but the word has changed now. So they're gonna get used to 
waiting for you to go behind the door again. This time we're going for 30 seconds. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm just quickly counting and going. So now you can see that he was moving around, but he was in waiting mode, right? So you have to do do this until they get really comfortable with it. So the other thing that you can do is tell them, just sit, give him sit, tell him to stay, just stay, wait 10 seconds, right? And then say, Josh, wait, nice and clear. Then go behind the door. So one more thing that you can do is place your dog in an environment or area that they really love and they're really comfortable. So in this case, uh, Josh loves this couch and really enjoys this area. So I'm going to leave him here and I'm going to ask him to wait. So here's how he's going to look like. Josh, wait. And I'm going to go behind the door again. And uh, this time I'm going to go for 15 minutes or in a minute. I'm going to try to push it a little bit longer. We'll see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now about 50 seconds. I'm just going to push it a little bit more for a minute. And then I'm going to go back. So now you can see yourself that he is more comfortable and he is more uh, relaxed in that environment. Because we went through this process of teaching our dog, first of all, the sit command, stay command, and then we made it more challenging. We went around the dog when we were uh, teaching them the stay command, and we made it even harder. And we started going away from the dog on the stay command. Uh, we left their sight. And then once they are comfortable with the stay for a longer period, then we introduce the weight command. And now we're just practicing and making it even better. And this way they can tolerate uh, staying home alone or being away from you easier and better. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have a so I hope that give you another aspect of understanding what the weight command is and what it can do for you, right? You can use in many, many scenarios. It doesn't have to be just for leaving the dog home alone. You know, you can use the weight command. And for example, I'll give you a, 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 a very unique situation. You go to that to a dog park or a park and there is a washroom and you have to go and use the washroom you can ask your dog to sit and wait while you go and use the washroom you know also the dog can sit and wait outside of the washroom while you go and use the washroom you come back your dog is waiting for you that's another situation that you can use right it doesn't have to be just you know when you're leaving your dog home uh, for my Americans, Americans would be a restroom, right? If you're going to be using the restroom, <clears throat> that would be an uh, option as well. Um, so understanding the difference between the weight and stay is very important. And the way we teach the dog to tolerate uh, and understand the weight command is is a process that you have to take, not just go for it. Uh, and it's something that you have to learn how to do it. And then you have to teach it to your dog what it means and what it does. Uh, I hope that makes sense. I hope that uh, this tutorial has given you some ideas of what training basically is in general and what weight command is and how you can use it and what you need to do in order to get the results that you want. Dog training is very simple. As you could see in my videos that I was showing to you guys, I never use treats to train my dog or to reward my dogs, that the dogs that I was working, right? It's very simple to use 
treats. Uh, it's very uh, confusing to use treats to train dogs. I don't want to confuse my dog more than they are because when you're training your dog the, the commands, it is already a confusing dilemma for a dog to learn and understand what are you trying to teach? What, what, is, what are you trying to say here? What, what does stay mean? What, what does S-T-A-Y mean? What, what are you trying to say? What weight does, does weight mean, right? For a dog to learn all these things is very confusing. So you don't want to add more confusion, confusion in the manner of especially training your dog with you adding treats. Treats can cause confusion in the process. But as you could see, I never use treats. I don't, do not use treats to train dogs. I use treats for, for because, just because. I use treats, I give treats to my dogs and I, I, I suggest people to use treats to, the, to give to their dogs treats just because, but not because you are training your dog. When it comes to training and teaching a dog something, you don't need to use treats. It's like, I, if I'm trying to teach you something, if I use food to reward you for teaching you something, you're going to say, hey, is this dinner time? Is this lunch time? You're supposed to teach me. You're not supposed to feed me, right? Why is it that we use the same concept? Why don't we use the same concept with dogs? What's so wrong about dogs? Dogs are very intelligent animals. Dogs are super intelligent animals. They understand us. They learn from us. They can exactly know what you mean. Yes, it is confusing in the beginning, but once they learn it, they, are, they know exactly what to do. Again, remember, dogs have been bred and designed by humans for humans. That means they are designed to work for us, to live with us, to be piece of cake to be with us. They're not supposed to be challenging. If you use treats to train your dog, you're making it challenging. You're confusing your dog. I just want you to understand this concept itself, right? That it's not a matter of using treats. It's a matter of clarity. That's how I started this tutorial. You have to be clear to your dog. If you're not clear, your dog is not going to understand. You're not, your dog is not going to learn, and your dog is not going to give you the behaviors that you want. And if you want to be clear, you have to use a system that is simple and clear for your training your dog. And play and praise as a reward system is the most simplest, clearest, method to use to train the dog. But if you use food or treat, you're going to mess up the whole situation. So in the beginning, I ask you to ask questions about the weight and stay and separation anxiety and things like that. And I'm going to answer some of those questions that has come through. I'll just quickly go through the questionnaire to see if there is any questions related to this. And I see that John Cipolla is in the house. Uh, John Cipolla and uh, Sut, Sut, Sut Fanny. Sut Fanny is in the house as well. Uh, let me... The one thing that stood up for me was the, the idea that John Cipolla gave. John Cipolla is one of my students, one of my puppy training students, and he has a, a beagle called Rua, who is 11 months old now. And he said that uh, I have neighbors wanting and volunteering to spend time with her. That, that's another option too. If you have a puppy or you have a dog that you need to leave, your home, leave it home alone, you know, ask the neighbor, ask your friends to look after your dog. You know, it doesn't have to be doggy daycare or you don't have to hire a pet sitter. 
You can ask your neighbors and friends and family members to look after your dog. The idea here is don't leave your dog home alone or, you know, it just stresses them. If they are, you know, in general, dogs are social animals. They want to be, be with another human. As I said, dogs have been bred and designed by humans for humans. They want to be, be with humans. They want to be with you. And if you take away that opportunity of them being with you, it does stress them. They don't understand why are you leaving them home alone. In your mind, hey, I'm going to work. In your mind, hey, I'm going to do some shopping. In your mind, you're saying, I'm doing something that is very important for me. But from your dog's point of view, they don't know that you're doing shopping. They don't know that you're going to work to make money to be able to buy this and that or pay these bills and that. They don't understand that. The only thing that I, they see and kind of understand is that, hey, you left me alone. And when you do that, in, from your dog's point of view, is that, hey, what did I do that you're punishing me with leaving me home alone? What did I do wrong? Did I do something wrong? And that's how they feel when you leave them alone. Alone, They feel like they are punishing them. But by understanding this concept, first of all, and also understanding the, the tutor learn, tutorial that we went through today, of understanding how to teach the dog stay, wait, and all that. If you go through this process and teach your dog to wait for you, now the conversation changes. Your dog says, oh, I see. You're, you have to go somewhere, and you're asking me to wait, and I know you will be back. So I'm just going to wait for you. I'm not going to stress out. I know I'm not being punished. I know this routine. You go and you come back. You go and you come back. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I'm, I'm okay. Go. No problem. I'll wait for you. That's the conversation that you want to get from your dog. Instead of, hey, I'm panicking. What happened? What did I do wrong? What, where did you go? Hey, come back. Come back. Come back. I don't know what's going on. Hey, And the reason they're barking, they're saying, come back. Come back. Right, but if your dog knows what exactly stay, wait, and c c has been trained, then your dog says, I'm good with it, go and come back. I'm just gonna have a nap over here while you're out. Good, uh, it gives me an opportunity to have a nap while you're not home. Go, I'll be, I'll be in my bed. That's the conversation that you want to have instead of all those confusion and stress and all that. And let me see if there's any questions regarding uh, the weight. I don't think there was any question. Uh, Suit Fanny is it very clear, very good. Uh, good to hear. All right. Okay. So that was the, the tutorial for the weight command. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, once again, if you want to learn more about my new program that I have created, I highly suggest you to click on the description area of this video as well to learn more uh, about my new program. And if you are interested in working with me and being one of my students of my perfect dog plan, perfect dog training and coaching plan, all you have to do is set up a free Zoom call which you can, again, walk, find the link to this uh, calendar in the description area. Uh, just simply click on it, uh, set up the perfect day and the time that is suitable for you, and hopefully I will see you and meet you soon. Um, if you have any other questions uh, regarding anything, any topic, uh, especially weight command that we just talked about uh, in this tutorial, and you want to, uh, to um, expand more on this topic, again, ask your questions in the uh, comments area. Uh, Sutefani, uh, you can contact me using the Zoom 
uh, Zoom call uh, if you have any uh, issues or problems that you want me to uh, help you. Uh, just simply, yes, yeah, Sudfani, uh, just um, use the link in the description. It's right there. Uh, if you have any questions, again, ask your questions in the comments area. In the um, comments area, yes. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon as well for the channel so you will be notified as soon as I post a new video or if I go live for another tutorial or live session like this in the future, you will be notified. Make sure to share this video so everybody else, other dog lovers can benefit from this video. Make sure to hit the like button as well so the uh, algorithm of YouTube can help this video to be uh, promoted to other dog lovers like you. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this session. I will see you next time. And until next time, have fun with your dog.